Super Mario Odyssey, so here we are in Luncheon Kingdom, and for some strange reason I, I lost a little part of the video, but basically what happened here is that I left the cap shop there, and there's going to be a moon inside of those boxes that are between the two buildings, so I didn't miss anything besides that. Uh, <coughs> or maybe I didn't lose the beginning of that video and I just played at the end of the last one, that is a possibility, but... Anyway, as I said, inside of this city area, there's going to be a couple of purple coins that we can get, and I'm just checking on top of these pillars, making sure there's no hidden moons or anything up there, and it doesn't seem like there were yet. Anyway, there may be a little bit later when you finish the game, I can't remember, but I don't think there's a whole lot of secretive stuff around here, besides these purple coins, of course. So this video is going to be pretty productive. Man, I love hitting those cans, though. That is just, that's awesome. But anyway, this video will be pretty productive. We're going to be spending a lot of our time as a fireball, and then we're also going to be uh, doing the next kind of quest that's required to reach the final boss in this kingdom. So first we're going to be jumping around the fruit that is lying around, of course. You know, can't really, uh, can't really explore too much in games like these. And then I saw that there's a gambling den back behind some of these fruits, so this is going to be the Toast Arena game that we'll be, uh, paying ten coins for. And if you want to make this easy, you can always just kind of make a save and then, uh, I think it works that way anyway, but you can save, pay the money, and then if you lose, just reload it so you don't lose any money, but anyway, like the first time we did this, you're going to want to make sure all of the slots are the moon, and then you'll get a moon from this. Now, the best way to do this is just kind of see, okay, which symbol comes before the moon, and as that symbol is falling, that's when you throw your hat. So in this case, heart falls before the moon, and as the heart falls, that's when I'm going to throw the hat, and then I'm pretty much guaranteed to hit the moon. So you just do that five times. I believe that is the longest slot machine inside of Odyssey, which I think also means it's the last one. So if you don't like those, then that's a good thing. That should be the last time you, you run into one, and if it isn't, then there's I, I doubt there's many more than that. <laughs> uh, but there's I know for sure there's three, and I don't know where the second one is, but the first one is in Sand Kingdom, and obviously the third one that I know of is here. Anyway, uh, we're gonna be heading on this way once again now that we've done enough of our exploring. And I'm gonna check here to see to the left when you finish the game, small spoiler I guess, when you finish the game there might be some turnips growing to my left there and I didn't look here because I had no idea to look for them at this point. Uh, but if there are turnips growing there, if there's a golden one, you can pull that up and then throw it into the stew for another moon. But if you can't do that before you beat the game, then just beat the game and come back and do that once you finish it, I guess. <laughs> so down there, there's going to be a couple of salt piles inside of this lake and just a couple of other areas that I think we're going to be heading on over to. So I can't remember. It looks like, okay, I do go and get this... A checkpoint flag and it's always good to do that because it gives you another warp point and also a place to respawn in case you die then of course make sure you get some of these purple coins I mean there's a few more around here that I don't get that I had to get later but it's just good just to look around and check and come on this way if you want to I think there's a few more purple coins over here and there may even be the mini area that we're going into I can't remember it looks like no it looks like just purple coins and Looks like about five of them there. My goodness, that's a lot. <laughs> and if you notice, there's this really kind of narrow pathway that you have to jump on as this fire guy. And I should have been listening to my hat there and uh, when he told me it's a dead end, because it is in fact a dead end. But anyway, if you're thinking, hmm, that's kind of sketchy, well, you're going to be doing that a lot in a couple of these areas that are even sketchier than that was. So just kind of get used to using or jumping around as the lava guy, because you're going to be doing that quite a bit. Then we're going to notice there's a few more purple uh, purple coins and then also that block that we've seen in a couple of worlds now, which you can't use until the end of the game anyway. Even more purple coins over here, which I saw in the beginning of the last video. And then we're going to finally be, head be heading back toward this direction. And then I think we go on to that sort of cliffside that's to the left of us right now. And I think we do that area before we uh, continue on in this level. So it looks like I'm heading straight for it. Of course, which is kind of cool, you'll be able to jump right through those grates that are over there. And if you can aim your ground pounds better, you should be able to get a moon outside of this uh, salt pile there. And then just throw your hat onto the other fireball when he jumps out of one of these sides, and then head on over to that hat door that we saw. Of course, make sure, once again, you can aim yourself a little bit better than I seem to be able to right now. And then we'll be jumping up through these railings, and we can jump on out of the hat and knock ourselves into the hat door. 
as soon as I walk in and it actually wants to load. <laughs> that was kind of weird. So here we're gonna throw our hat onto these forks and you can flick yourself upward. Now I had a really hard time flicking myself straight for some reason. I don't know if it was just because of the way that my thumb was bending, but it seemed like I just wanted to fling myself to the left a little bit. There's also gonna be these places you can throw your hat into and it will send your hat flying onto another fork on a different section. And if you time them differently, it'll send you onto different forks as we've seen here. In this case, you do kind of want to go diagonally just so you can hit that fork and then we can jump up here and throw our hat into whatever those things are called and then uh, spinners, I guess, and then get the coins, go on over to the right side, then try to throw our hat there so we hit one of those forks and there's the moon. Now there's actually another moon in here. I don't know if I get it. I guess we'll find out. Yep, it's right over there. Okay, so we're going to want to jump on down to... Uh, that fork, and then we can fling ourselves over to the right side, or you can live on the edge like I apparently like to, and just long jump on over there from the top, so either one works. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to fork yourself on over though when you do this. Now of course that you have both of them, at this point you can just kill yourself and uh, respawn at the beginning and then leave, or you can try to get out the normal way, and I'm pretty sure I get out the normal way. Yeah, it looks like I get out the correct way. So just hit yourself onto both forks, jump up out here, and go through the black door, and then we can finally head on over to where we're actually supposed to be going, which will hopefully soon be unlocking the access to the boss of this kingdom. But for now, head on over back to this fireball, turn into him, and then jump up this waterfall. You're going to have to get on that hill, obviously. And then we're going to be dealing with these stupid little spouts of soup or whatever the heck this poison substance we're in is. And that can be a little bit tricky. I got kind of lucky there being able to do it in only two jumps, but that can be a little bit tricky because those spouts do go up and down. Now there's going to be a couple of cheese stacks here, and if you notice, you can't really take out those cheese stacks on your own. You're going to have to take over one of these hammer bros, thank goodness. And then you can use them to, first of all, take out these spinies. You really don't want them to come up on you. And the screen is going to come up and tell you there that if you swing your Joy-Cons back and forth like that, then you will be able to send a lot of hammers flowing. And we're just going to have to clear a pretty good majority of this cheese to get that uh, moon revealed there. There's also going to be some purple coins hiding here if we could actually hit them. Kind of annoyingly when you're throwing stuff with this... Uh, uh, with the hammer bros, the hammer kind of goes in an arc, so you have to be back a little bit to make sure that you actually hit what you're aiming for. <laughs> but it's not too bad, just kind of sit back and then start spamming away, and then we're going to have to jump out of this guy, I think, so we can actually hit that lever. And luckily these guys do respawn, so you can jump out pretty freely, but I was having way too much fun actually being a hammer bro for the first time. But anyway, jumped on that. Activate the lever and then the moon will reveal itself and then we're gonna head on over pick up that moon And then we get the little mini cutscene for uh, Unlocking the next part of the kingdom and then pretty much the end of the level is there So I think I'll probably end up or I'll probably stop narrating right now and I will see you in the next video